All right, so here we are at the uh, the end of this project, finally, long last. This is using iRay here in Substance Painter. So I'm gonna just kind of talk about the approach that I used to create this result. So we'll hop over into painting mode and probably we can get rid of some of the stuff here because we're really only gonna be looking at the layers. So the first thing I did is I cheated a little bit and I used a, a smart material. I'm gonna just maybe turn some of these layers off and we can walk our way up. So the nice thing about using a smart material is it's just a nice head start for getting a, a, a base that looks cool. And then, I mean, almost all the time they're gonna to need to be modified somewhat. But so the first one I used was a, a steel dark aged and the smart materials are gonna be uh, they're just going to be down here in, let's see, we'll go to shelf. And then in shelf, you'll see something down here called smart materials. And yeah, so I probably used like steel painted or maybe this uh, more distressed version. And anyway, uh, steel stained, I'm not sure, steel dark aged. So if you're looking for this exact one, you know, that's uh, that's where you'd find it. If you're not familiar with how, how smart materials work, they're basically just materials that they're using the regular material workflow that some artists that substance painter went ahead and, and put together. So that's a nice little shortcut. And I will almost always throw a base metal down underneath everything else if that's what is intended to, like if the geometry is intended to be a metal. Obviously like this stuff here probably wouldn't be metallic, but pretty much everything else, that would be a safe thing. And then the nice thing with that is as you start layering stuff on, a lot of these smart materials are gonna have their own metal bases, but I'll typically just delete that because I, I kind of want it all to be kind of consistent. So, and this is how, here we can see that smart material, which is right up here, red paint, you can see all kinds of stuff in it. So we've got some effects, some rust, some additional like drippy rust stainy stuff, whatever, right? Like, and all of these things can be modified. And so like inside here, we'll find the actual paint stuff. And so if I wanted to change it to like blue or something, it would be pretty simple to do that. If I had my properties window open, that would be, that would be doable. Okay, so that's how I get the, the basics here, right? So there's like, the red paint, I just duplicated it and I made it white. And then I made a version of that for gray for like the one off, like, you know, a uh, little randomized panels there. And then uh, we've got black paint. And I don't even know if I actually, you can look at the mask. I doubt that one's being used. So probably just go ahead and get rid of that. I think I might've been thinking I'd, I would use it as like a decals or, or something. And I, I may still, but whatever. So here's a rubber dry, which is another smart material. And so I use that here and up there and let's see we got plastic dusty which is just gonna i think i got rid of the plastic stuff and i just used the dust i liked it had a really nice dust effect for for surfaces that were pointing down i thought if this was you know supposed to be some uh, well-used drone delivery drone or whatever that, that would be doing a lot of landing and taking off and that's where i would expect there to be some some dust accumulation and let's see, we've got the eyes. So the eyes are a little more complicated. We'll go ahead and open that up. So for the eyes, we have some, let's see, we'll go to the bottom of it. So here's eye base. I'm actually gonna open up my, uh, my properties here so you can see kind of how this is set up and we'll just turn these things off. Let me see how it builds up our eyes. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, so the eye base, I think I wanna turn the parent on. So at the, at the, uh, the, the bottom layer here, this fill, which should be labeled, it's only got one thing on it, which is this red emissive. So if you turn that off, we're gonna go straight to that base metal that's all the way down at the bottom of the stack. And then after that, I have something that's going to, this layer here is, the eye base is mostly, probably shouldn't be talking to emiss at all. Um, but anyway, I guess that's blending together. And so it's uh, got uh, the metal turned all the way down. It's pretty shiny. So that's gonna give us that shininess to it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. The uh, opacity and all the rest of it is set to, um, and I guess I've got my emissive here. So maybe I don't even need that. Yeah, I, th I think I probably just duplicated that. Okay, so anyway, hopefully that makes sense. And then I've got a roughness variation on there. So what this is, this guy is basically, the only thing it's doing is breaking up that shiny glass surface with some dust. And if we look at what the uh, the mask editor here is doing, that's kind of what that looks like. So everywhere that this is white, the result of the, the roughness here is gonna be just different than the thing beneath it. So if we look at this roughness value, it's gonna be pretty consistent at 0.17, which is pretty shiny. 
And this stuff here, wherever this is white, the value is actually going to be closer to 0.46. So that's how we get that kind of nice stuff happening there in the highlight. And then we've got the hex mask stuff. So let me go ahead and turn that on. So for the hex, I'm using sort of a, a mask, double masking here. So the, the actual hex layer is going to have its, its only thing here is this orange emissive. And then I'm using a mask, which is just this hex fill, basically. So if you go into, uh, well, let me open up one more thing here. We'll go back to the shelf and then you can go into procedurals and then whatever. I just grabbed one of these like honeycomb things. There's, there's a bunch of them. So I just found one that, that looked good for this, what I was going for, hexagon border, I guess. And then you just add that in as the fill, but I wanted it to be a projection. So hopefully I didn't just modify that. Looks like I just turned that off on accident. Right, okay. So I wanted it to be a planar projection. The The projections that I usually use are gonna be a triplanar projection or the UVs where it just looks at the UVs. But in this case, I wanted it to be kind of straight on because triplanar, you just start to get like wherever, it looks fine if you're looking at it from from the side or the front, but as it transitions, you're going to get kind of like a, it's just going to interpolate between those two, uh, those two versions, and you get a, a line. I was really trying to avoid the line. So um, here's planar projection, and, and with the planar projection, you get some options for uh, 3D projection settings, and you can kind of rotate it around so that it's like shooting dead on. And so I rotated it probably just a tiny bit forward, and then I needed to mask it out because it was shooting all the way down. Like the it does it didn't know that it should fall off there. So that's kind of what this is doing. So I, I doubled up the, that mask so that I could have the glowy stuff. This would be totally universal, and then I'm kind of multiplying it by this value, and then I'm doing an additional multiply with this value. So everywhere that this is black, nothing shows up, and everywhere that this is black, nothing shows up. And that's just kind of a way to control how that is looking. So once I had that, I wanted to sort of taper that overall glowy. So this is gonna be uh, the same idea here. We're only talking to the emissive channel. It's full black, and then that's just something that I, I painted in, and then I threw a blur filter on there. Like that was the actual paint job. So once it's filtered, you start to get something like, that looks like that. And you can see there's a little bit of artifacting in here. That's because of how I separated the UVs. I probably shouldn't have done that, but it's not a big deal. You don't really notice it unless you're really looking for it. Tap the M key to go back to the regular material mode. And then let's see, I wanted to just break up some of those hexes. Like maybe there's something going on there. Other, they do special things or maybe they're broken or whatever. So I thought that'd be kind of a neat thing and pretty easy to set up. And then we've got the little eye color here. So I'll go ahead and turn that stuff on. And it's basically just variations on the same idea. So the first thing is this is these little glowy spots are just from the same big eye hex fill stuff. So there was a glow and the way that I made the glow is with the mask that I then blurred. And then a little bit of a hotter glow. So this gives us a little bit more con uh, control over the individual temperatures, uh, so to speak. And then we've got a duplicate of the hex copy. And I think on this one, I did probably just set it to UV projection. Yeah, because it's so small and you can't really, there isn't really a, a noticeable transition in which direction it's pointing. Okay, and then let's see, we've got the glowy stuff. This is gonna be very similar to all the eye stuff where we have just like basically a straight emiss channel and then it's just painted in in the mask. And then we have the same thing here with a, a brighter color. This one's gonna be like this orange. So that's kind of how that happens. And it doesn't look like all that much now, but once you kick it into iRay, it looks pretty cool because it actually does cast light and you know, it's kind of fancy. And this is pretty, it's pretty simple to, to apply it. I just grabbed a regular brush and then just painted in that mask by hand. So that's that stuff. And then I wanted to do something kind of cool with the wings. The original concept had these as glowing, but it was, it was like too much for them to glow in this version. So I decided to try to fake like a Damascus steel kind of thing. So that is, there's just a little bit, like this guy's got a little height and a little roughness variation over like the base metal, and which is all the way down to the bottom now. Uh, probably not worth taking a look at, but just take my word for it. It's those values are, are slightly different and there's no height on the base metal. And then I used this uh, grunge texture here that's probably also here in the procedurals, like maybe this guy. I don't know what it's called, but yeah, Dama. It's off the it's off the thing, but it's called Grunge Damas, so probably they're thinking Damascus as well. Anyway, so that's how you get that look. It's kind of cool, and really only shows up like if you're looking at it with the you know the, the lights hitting it. And I think that's kind of a nice little extra something there. And then these engines, 
I want to hide that stuff. So I make myself a little uh, material here that is black and totally non-metallic and totally rough. And then, you know, just using uh, some simple painting methods or whatever you can get. You can get that uh, and the result is that which i think is a little bit more pleasant and kind of makes more sense and then we've got some wing heat discoloration so you can see it's got that like little little hints of like maybe something warmer and cooler and whatever and and uh, at full strength it's pretty intense so you know it's kind of wanted to again just add some visual interest there something interesting going on and let's see okay so that is that's how all the layers are set up and we're at 11 minutes so i'm going to stop the video now the next thing i'm going to show in the next video is how to do things like this where i'm using hard surface stamps to add additional detail and then feeding those hard surface stamps into generators uh, in the existing materials so that they start to do all the the edge wear stuff that they're they're going to do automatically and then there's also right here is a different technique where i use height maps so i can actually like paint panel lines in to add additional detail like you may notice that the stuff doesn't exist in the in the model if that's something you're paying attention to these here as well okay so we'll take a look at that in the next video